Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about trapezoids and their properties. We are working on Excel and 10 and let's get started. By the way, this is my second recording for this assignment because I just realized that I wasn't on a landscape mode, uh, I was on a portrait mode. So that would be very crazy when you were viewing this on a computer or on a laptop. So let's just redo this. Okay, so trapezoids, when you see uh, this sort of a figure, two legs are cut in half, that means most likely your question is going to be about this right here, that one right here, and that one right here. So the ones on the sides are called the bases, uh, base one and base two, doesn't matter which one is the first base or the second base, it's just like... It's just a way to label them. The one in the middle is called the mid-segment. Because Y is a midpoint. It cuts ZX in P two pieces. V is called a midpoint because it divides UW into equal pieces. So let's get started and try to see if this question is about what I just mentioned. So UZ is given as 32. UZ is one of the bases right here. That's 32. And then V wx is the other base so i'm gonna use the same color because the bases are kind of like like terms so we usually add them up and divide we always add them up and divide them by two when we deal with a mid segment in a trapezoid and our question is the length of vy so let's just highlight that side vy is as i mentioned earlier is the mid segment now the formula for these questions is the mid segment equals to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. That's our formula. Once again, when you see this sort of a figure, it doesn't matter whether the trapezoid is flipped or vertical or horizontal, if the legs are equal pieces, then you are most likely going to deal with uh, this setting, mid-segment, equals base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. You should write this formula all the time because the given numbers are going to be different in every question. Sometimes mid-segment is going to be given, sometimes the bases is, are going to be given. So it's important for you to write the formula and then plug in the numbers in the right positions. So let's get started. The mid-segment, that's the unknown. So I will just say X for that one. Oops, I don't like this color. That's not for mid-segment. So the mid-segment is unknown. So right here, that's my mid-segment. Let's plug it in. Equals, what about base 1 and base 2? One of them is 32, the other one is 72. Just put them in any kind of order. Doesn't matter. 32 divided by 2. This is the easiest form. When the bases are given, all you have to do is division. To get the mid segment out but if the mid segment is given then you'll need to do cross multiplication probably we are going to end up with that sort of a question so here i have three numbers on the right side they are all like terms and i need to combine them all together so let's start by doing this x equals and then 72 plus 32 that gives me a 104 and if i divide that 104 by 2 i get 52 so that would be my answer for this question. X equals 52. I label that X for VY. So VY would be 52. Moving on to the next level. Okay, at this level, I'm going to keep going back and forth because the next one is kind of 89. That's what happened in my first recording. Uh, I will do several questions on at this level because some of the questions are going to be about angles. Some of them are going to be about... Uh, different properties of trapezoids so i just want to make sure that i cover them all let's get started this one here you have an isosceles trapezoid what does that mean it means two things uh one oh actually it means three things uh one of them is obtuse angles are congruent Another one, pretty similar to this, so the first one and the second one is kind of the same property. 
uh, acute angles are congruent. And the reason for these two properties, the reason we have these two is, let me just put the reason, legs are congruent. Here is how you identify the legs. Uh, the ones that are that look like parallel, those are going to be the bases. So if you have two sides, one shorter, one lo one longer, those are uh, that that looks like they they are not gonna touch forever. So those are the bases. The other two sides, when you extend them, they are gonna meet at a point. Uh, those are called uh, the legs. When those legs are the same, all of the obtuse angles are gonna be the same in that trapezoid all of the acute angles are going to be the same. You will have two obtuse, two acute, by the way, in an uh, isosceles trapezoid. For the most part, you may end up with 290 degrees, but it's it's not like as usual as the others. So the, another property is that the diagonals are congruent. So if you need help with this assignment and 10 on IXL, uh, please make sure that you write these properties on the side to use for future references for other questions that you're going to end up with. You don't, I don't want you to go back and forth between my questions in the video to get your assignment done. So just write this down and then use whichever is going to help you when you have your question. So let's get started. What we have is angle H equals to 2u. Let's just put that up. Angle H is over here and I want to put 2u degrees. What is the value of u? Now, this question is about angles. Let's just see the properties that I made a list of and then see which ones are about the angles. The first one says obtuse angles are equal. The second one says acute angles are equal. Those are not equal by the way, they mean congruent, which means their measures are the same. Their measures are equal. So, angle H is an obtuse angle, angle E is an obtuse angle. That means they should be equal. So if they're equal, let's just put it up to, whoops, what, what is that? Okay, let's just remove that big fat two and then rewrite it. To you and 124, both are obtuse and they are equal. To get the U by itself, you need to get rid of that two so angle U equals to 62 degrees. Let's move on to the next question. But then again, this is 89 points. I don't want to do this one. Not yet at least. I will go back and forth and see if I can get different type of questions at this level because you're going to need this. Many of you are not going to need that 89 level. And if you do, I really believe that you can figure out how to do that question as well. Okay, if xy equals to, okay, remember what I said in the first question, when you have this sort of a figure, you are most likely going to deal with the bases and the mid-segments. So let's see what this one is about. xy is one of the bases right here, t minus 21. wz is the mid-segment. I'm going to use a different color for that one. So I first want to do the, the other base, which is uv right here. Uh, negative t plus 99. Negative t plus 99. And then for the mid segments, I'm using these two same colors for the bases because I just want to indicate that they are like terms. We are going to add them together and divide them by two to get the purple segment, the mid segment, wz. So this one here is negative t plus 82. That looks weird, negative t uh, plus next to each other. So I want to write the formula first. Negative, no, there's no negative yet. Let's write the formula first. So mid segment equals base one plus base two divided by two. Remember, if both of the bases are given, it gets easier. But in here, they are all variables. So 
we are going to take a little more steps to solve this question, but it's still the same. Uh, we are, this time, we are going to do cross multiplication, by the way. That's what I mean by it's the same. So the mid-segment, that was given uh, ne as negative t plus 82. Negative t plus 82 equals to, let's plug in the right side. One of the bases, just put whichever you want. Uh, let's put negative t plus 99 first. And then plus comes in from the formula. The second one is t minus 21. These are my two bases. Now I want to divide this whole thing by 2. I have a fraction on the left. I should have a fraction on the... I have a fraction on the right. So let's just make, turn the left side into a fraction. So it's easier to do cross multiplication. So at this point, this is what I do. 1 times uh, top right corner, upper right of that fraction or let's just okay I have another idea let's just simplify that upper right corner first of this fraction so in the upper right I have negative t plus t what's that aren't they gonna cancel each other out so t's are gone on the upper right corner 99 plus negative 21 that's going to give me a 78. And I will divide this thing by 2. And then I will bring down the left side. Negative t plus 82. These are not like terms. That's the, that's the reason I cannot combine them. Uh, now I just realized that I don't need to do, divide it by 2. Because what is 78 divided by 2? I don't need to divide the left side by 1. That's what I meant. I keep saying wrong stuff because I just woke up, guys. Sorry about that, but I am doing it right. So focus on what I am writing more than what I am saying at times. If you realize that I am saying something weird, just ignore it for this video. Okay, 78 divided by 2 is 39. So the right side turns into 39. Left stays the same. Negative T plus 82 let's just do it this way just to highlight the like terms now 82 and 39 those are like terms if we just subtract 82 from both sides then negative t is going to be equal to let me see that's 42 and there's one more difference 43 negative 43 if negative t is 43, t is going to be equal to positive 43. That's it for this video. And let's move on to the next one. By the next one, I mean like go up one level, down one level, and try to look for a similar question. Come on, okay. Uh, let's just do this one. Let me see. QR. No, this is even easier than what we did. I don't know why it's at 89 level. Okay, pretty much the same. So I'm not doing this again. I'm trying to look for a question about the diagonals. Okay, here. Here we go. Okay, in the first question, if you remember that I said when you have an isosceles triangle, a uh, trapezoid, one of the properties is that the diagonals are equal or the diagonals are congruent. By the way, you might be hearing my son in the background. Please excuse him. He's, he's so energetic uh, at this time of the day, just like the other times of the day. So, diagonals are congruent. So, that's what I'm given in this question anyways. Like, EG is given. FH is given. EG is right here. It's one of the diagonals. I'm not worried about what it is right now. Uh, all I'm worried about is that it's given, the diagonal. And the other diagonal is FG. FH, my bad. Hey, Asa, can you be quiet? Uh, so these two are given. I will bring them down. 
I will bring them down and then set them up equal and then solve it for the variable. So 2p plus 5. This is what I have by the way. These two are equal. Let's plug them in. 2p plus 5 equals 4p minus 83. Get the p by itself. So I will first subtract 2p. Bring down that 5 on the left. 4 minus 2 is 2. P bring down that negative 83. Uh, to put the numbers together, I need to do the inverse of that 83, negative 83. So I'm adding 83 on each side. So 5 plus 83 is 88. That equals to 2p. If 2p is 88, then one of them is going to be 44. So I think I did all of the questions that I wanted to do. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you liked the video, if you think it helped you out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, once again, thanks for watching and I will see you in another video.